Good evening and welcome to Alaska Weather. Thank you for joining us today. I'm meteorologist Amanda Bowen. At the bottom of the screen, you'll find a phone number where you can call 24-7 for a forecast outside of our show. Website weather.gov slash Alaska where you can go anytime for a localized forecast as well as lots of other weather and climate data. And our email address nws.ar.tvweather at noaa.gov where you can email us any comments or feedback that you have about the show. As far as hazardous weather is concerned over the next day or two, we do have a glacier dammed lake on the Nelchina Glacier that is releasing. So we're expecting significant rises on the Nelchina River, Teslina Lake, as well as Teslina River over the next couple of days. We're not expecting any actual flooding from this, but noticeable rises in the water level on those rivers and Teslina Lake. Uh, at the Teslina River at Richardson Highway is expected to peak within the next couple of days. Again, no flooding is expected, but if you have interests along the banks of these bodies of water, just be aware that we are expecting significant rises due to that glacier dammed lake release. Looking into our satellite imagery for today, we see a plume of moisture into the panhandle shifting south today though so most of that rain is going to start shifting south into british columbia instead of into the panhandle we also have our next system coming in to the aleutians just south of the aleutians actually coming out of the north we'll see that on our surface map and over the eastern interior we can see some clouds just the beginning of some convection starting to pop up where we're expecting some isolated thunderstorms this afternoon. So surface map for today, we have that low pressure system that's weakening, but just south of the panhandle with a cold front that is bringing in that moisture plume. So showers and rain for the panhandle today. High pressure just to the east of that low off the Washington and British Columbia coast is going to be uh, weakening as well as helping to deteriorate that low pressure system. Low over the eastern interior is what's going to be helping to force those isolated thunderstorms near the Yukon River, near the Canadian border. We also have low pressure over the northwestern portion of the state, bringing some showers and rain to that area, as well as some fog development along both the North Slope, the Chukchi Sea Coast, and St. Lawrence Island area. On the west side of that low, we've got those northwest winds with that counterclockwise circulation. And so those winds are gonna be a little bit stronger than usual today, which is gonna be pushing some water onto those northwest facing portions of the west coast. So areas along the Seward Peninsula from about Shishmaref to Wales, as well as the Yukon Delta, those northwest facing coastlines can expect some high water and wave action on the beaches over the next couple of days as that low stays there and those winds remain a little bit elevated out of the northwest. We see our low pressure system well off to the west, almost off the map today, coming off the Kamchatka Peninsula, bringing an occluded front into the Aleutians for rain for most of the Aleutians today as well. For tonight, not much change in the way of the weather. We'll continue to see rain and showers for the southern third of the state from the Panhandle up through the northern Gulf Coast and into the Alaska Peninsula. Snow making a return to the Alaska Range as well as the Wrangell St. Elias Mountains and the higher terrain of the Panhandle near the Canadian border. That low pressure system over the northwestern portion of the state just sticking around a little bit longer. So again, with those northwest winds and uh, higher water levels along the northwest facing portions of the west coast. 
fog continuing for portions of the North Slope as well as the West Coast and St. Lawrence Island. And that low in the Western Aleutians moving south and strengthening a bit, so bringing some additional rain to the Aleutians. For Thursday, we still have low pressure generally over the central interior, the eastern central interior that is near the Yukon River. So again, that's where we can expect some isolated thunderstorms on Thursday afternoon. We also still have that low pressure system sitting over the northwest portion of the state. So continuing fog, showers, and rain for the west coast. Some more showers developing for southwestern portions of the state and showers and rain continuing for the Gulf Coast up to about the Yukon River with more snow for the Alaska Range and the Chugach Mountains. Low pressure continuing to strengthen down to 1,001 millibars in the Western Aleutians. So some breezy conditions as well as rain for the Aleutians on Thursday. Heading into Friday, we've got another afternoon of isolated thunderstorms for that extreme eastern interior area near the Yukon, Yukon River and the Canadian border. We still have low pressure over the northwestern portion of the state, but it's starting to get nosed out a little bit by Friday with that incoming tongue of high pressure coming into the Bering Strait. So expect those winds to, those northwest winds that are been pushing that water up onto the northwestern facing portions of the west coast to start to die down a little bit um, by Friday, but we'll continue to see some rain and fog along the west coast as well as the north slope and continuing showers for the southern half of the state along the Gulf Coast but starting to dissipate a little bit as high pressure also starts making its way into the Gulf. Low pressure for the western Aleutians continues to uh, continues to strengthen a bit uh, down to 997 millibars so continued breezy conditions and rain for the Aleutians on Friday. Low temperatures on Thursday morning for the mainland as well as the Aleutians. This is maybe the first time in a while that we're expecting everybody to be in the 30s and 40s. So fall is definitely upon us. We will see some 50s in the panhandle, though, with generally low 50s for the panhandle. Back into those mid 30s for the north slope some cooler temperatures around freezing in the Brooks Range, and even some mid-30s along the Yukon River for the interior. So once again, it's a little cooler this week than what we saw last week, and it seems like fall has definitely begun now that we've hit September. For Thursday afternoon, again, cooler um, than what we were seeing last week with temperatures struggling to hit 60, even in the warmest spots of the state. So temperatures mid 50s to about 60 for the Panhandle. Same story for the Yukon Flats as well as the Fairbanks area and the Matsu. Uh, temperatures in the upper 50s to around 60 also for South Central, mid 50s for the Alaska Peninsula and mid 40s for Seward Peninsula as well as the Chukchi Sea Coast. For Friday morning, once again, temperatures rather cool. We've got mid 30s for the north slope and even some 30s for uh, along the Yukon River once again across the interior. 40s for south central uh, with even some temperatures dipping down into the 30s across the Kenai Peninsula as well as the Alaska Peninsula. Temperatures around 50 maybe the upper 40s for the panhandle on Friday morning. Friday afternoon, we are looking at another fall-like day. Temperatures in the mid to upper 50s across the warmest parts of the interior. Looking at low 50s for the YK Delta, 40s for the Seward Peninsula, and low to mid 40s for the North Slope once again. Panhandle looking like our warmest temperatures with the Southern Panhandle possibly reaching the mid 60s. So now that it's officially September and meteorological fall started yesterday, September 1st, we'll take another look at that fall outlook. Looking like conditions are favoring warmer than usual temperatures for fall. That's the September, October, November period 
with the highest chance of warmer than usual conditions across the northwestern portion of the state from the North Slope and the Chukchi Sea coast to the western portion of the Seward Peninsula, but the whole state in general looking at trending towards warmer than usual conditions. And for precipitation, we have some areas along the northwestern portion of the state as well as the southwestern portion of the state that are favoring above normal precipitation. But for the rest of the state, including the panhandle, it looks like there's not much in the way of a signal, so not much in the way of a forecast. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. On to look at your aviation weather, starting with flying weather for Thursday morning. Expect lots of IFR conditions for the northwestern corner of the state from the north slope all the way to the north side of the Seward Peninsula. Also across most of the Brooks Range, IFR conditions for Thursday morning. Also IFR conditions for much of the northern Gulf, including the eastern Kenai, Prince William Sound, and areas east to the northern Panhandle. Also for the Western Alaska Range and the Northern Alaska Peninsula IFR conditions and IFR conditions for the Southwestern Bering across the Aleutians. For Thursday afternoon, improvement across much of the mainland to MVFR or VFR, but some IFR conditions hanging around along the Chukchi Sea coast as well as the North Slope portions of the Western Alaska Range, Prince William Sound, and the West Southwestern Bering Sea and Aleutians. For Friday morning, we have IFR conditions returning north of the Brooks Range, as well as developing across much of the Alaska Range, and IFR conditions continuing across much of the Aleutians and Southern Bering Sea. Friday afternoon, we see some improvement in the Alaska Range, although then IFR conditions developing for the Eastern Alaska Range up to about the Yukon River along the Canadian border. Also some IFR conditions continuing for eastern portions of the North Slope, as well as the Ukiakvik area and portions north into the Beaufort Sea. And as usual, IFR conditions continuing in the Aleutians for Friday afternoon. Pass conditions on Thursday and Ectubic Pass starting out IFR, but improving some to MVFR on Thursday afternoon. Same story at Adigan Pass, IFR in the morning, improving to MVFR. Lake Clark and Merrill Passes both expected to be IFR all day on Thursday, as well as Rainy Pass IFR on Thursday. Windy Pass starting out IFR and improving to MVFR Thursday afternoon. Isabel starting out MVFR and improving to VFR on Thursday afternoon. Same at Mentasta Pass. MVFR Thursday morning, improving to VFR Thursday afternoon. Tanita Pass starting out IFR and improving to MVFR on Thursday afternoon. And Portage Pass also starting out IFR and improving to MVFR on Thursday afternoon. Chilkoot and White Passes both expected to start out Thursday morning MVFR, but improve to VFR on Thursday afternoon. Taking a look at freezing levels, we have two areas of warmer air coming into the picture from the south. The first is coming up into the southern panhandle, where we see freezing levels 6 to 8,000 feet across the panhandle, even 10,000 feet across the very southern portions of the panhandle. And then we also have warm air coming into the western Aleutians, 6 to 8,000 feet there, increasing to 10,000 feet as we head south further south into the Pacific, mostly four to 6,000 feet over the mainland for Thursday morning. Icing for Thursday, one fairly significant area of considerable moderate icing above about 9,000 feet, stretching from the northern Gulf Coast north into the Alaska Range and up to the Yukon River along the Canadian border. Again, that's going to be considerable moderate icing above 9,000 feet. Also, quite a lot of isolated moderate icing across the rest of the mainland as well as much of the Aleutians above 9,000 feet. Jet stream winds on Thursday. We've got a low pressure system sitting right over the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island with our strongest jet southeast of that low from about 100 to 125 knots out of the southwest, stretching from the Gulf up across the Panhandle area. We also have a strong jet approaching the Western Aleutians, but still west of the Western Aleutians, peaking about 130 knots out of the north. 9,000 foot winds, we've got low in the same place with our strongest winds 
even further southeast of the low, so actually south of the panhandle out of the southwest, 45 to 50 knots. And then also across the western Aleutians out of the northwest, some winds around 45 knots around a low there. And then we see that low just north of the western Aleutians, that's going to be where our strongest winds are at 3,000 feet, 50 to 55 knots out of the northwest on the south and southwest side of that low. Otherwise, 5 to 10 knots across most of the mainland with a couple of spots of 20 knot winds. And for turbulence on Thursday, we have one area, mostly for the Western Aleutians, stretching into the Central Aleutians a bit, considerable moderate turbulence below 3,000 feet. That's going to be surrounded by an area of isolated moderate for much of the rest of the Aleutians, again, below 3,000 feet on Thursday. Welcome to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. And joining us once again is our good friend Eric Stevens from GINA, the uh, uh, Geographic Information Network of Alaska. Thanks again for joining us, Eric. We really appreciate it, as always. Happy to be here, Dave. Thanks. And, you know, we're, we're going to ask you some more satellite questions here, but, you know, okay. since you're a regular guest, we, we're going to give you a riddle this time, kind of a, a trick start to the show. Okay. How do you see a polar bear in a snowstorm? Sounds like a challenging question because okay. the polar bear's white and the snowstorm's white. Yeah. How do you do that? Well, in the world of satellite meteorology, uh, you couldn't because um, the spatial resolution of this instrument that we're going to talk about today has 375 meters resolution. And okay. even the most well-fed polar bear will not be 375 meters across. I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want to run into such a no, creature, a would you? Um, in the satellite meteorology world, the equivalent would be, how do you tell the difference between clouds and then an area that has no clouds but is mm -hmm. covered by snow, right. a piece of ocean that has no clouds but has sea ice. Ah. All three of these are white. The, right. the snow, the clouds, the sea ice, it's all white. So how, using satellite data, can you tell someone where the clouds are and where the clear areas are? This is important for aviators. Right. Uh, mariners want to know uh, in the ocean there, this white stuff, is that sea ice or is that just a cloud? Right. How do we tell the difference? And it turns out, if you look, say, at a picture of Alaska from the springtime, March okay. or April, and it's high noon, so we're getting a lot of sunshine. If you were, ride, if you were riding on a satellite with your human eye, yeah. look down, everything's white. Right. And we've got uh, you know, a picture for, of Alaska from uh, early April, and mm -hmm. we're seeing some of the lower elevations in south central Alaska are melting out, getting some brown ground there. But otherwise, there's a whole lot of white sure. on the image. What areas are cloudy, but what areas are clear and covered by snow or ice? Okay. It turns out that if we leave the visible spectrum behind a little bit, okay. see a satellite has multiple channels in the electric magnetic spectrum that it can look at. Oh, okay. Part of that's okay. visible light, what right. we see as humans, but there's a lot going on at other wavelengths. Mm -hmm. If we add in something that's called near infrared, what we couldn't quite see, but we're getting into that infrared territory, mm -hmm. there's a magical property that oh, we can exploit. Secrets to find. Okay. Oh yeah. This is actually powerful and, and, and almost magical that at a, a slightly longer wavelength when the sun shines down on Alaska mm -hmm. and then it bounces off back to the satellite, at that near infrared wavelength it turns out that snow and ice will absorb that wavelength but uh, liquid water, like liquid droplets in a cloud, mm -hmm. will reflect it back. Okay. And, and that's not the way it works in visible. You know, visible, it just bounces off of all those targets the same. But at near infrared, snow and ice absorbs it, and the liquid will reflect it back. Liquid cloud droplets will do that. Okay. And so an image where everything looks white suddenly becomes colorful. Oh, okay. And the way this recipe works is that the clouds look pink, and the snow-covered ground and the ice-covered ocean look blue. Suddenly now, we're able to see the polar bear in the snowstorm. We're able to see where the clouds are okay. and where the snow is and where the ice is. This is a powerful advantage. Consider the case uh, zooming into the Bering Strait area. Mm -hmm. What if you were asked to brief a pilot who wanted to fly, say, from Kotzebue down to Savunga or Gamble right. and had to fly VFR, visual flight rules, right. so they had to stay out of the clouds? Could you use a satellite image where everything is white to provide that pilot any guidance? It'd be pretty tricky. Very tricky, yeah. and that's why we have to go to this other recipe where the, the all-white polar bear in the snowstorm 
becomes more colorful. And now we can tell the pilot, aha, this is a cloud you want to stay out of, but over here, sure, it looks white in the visible spectrum, right. but what we're doing, we'll show you, oh, this is just snow-covered ground, but it's clear, so you can fly right through there, Fascinating. visual flight rules. Same thing for a mariner, a mariner who might want to uh, get down to uh, St. Lawrence Island, say, but mm -hmm. it has to avoid the sea ice, this product has applicability there as well. Wonderful. It's, it's an amazing new technology, so many new channels. Uh, the, the satellite that makes this imagery actually has 22 different channels that it looks at. 22 bands. secret decoder rings. 22 secret decoder rings. Okay. Uh, you know, I liken this to an uh, you know, activity I had in the car when I was growing up. We'd go on long car rides, and we'd do all the work in these activity books to, you know, stay calm, cool, and collected for our parents who were trying to get us across, uh, across the state. But to get the answer, the real answer, you had to apply that red sheet to see mm -hmm. the answer or the secret path or whatever the message was in that activity book to get you onto the next next page. And it's also like a, a photography filter, right? If you're, if you're taking a lot of pictures, you can apply different colors to see different parts of that image. I mean, that sounds a lot like what you're talking about. Oh, you know it. We The information is in there all yeah. along. We just have to combine the channels in a way to reveal what's in there. And by the way, you're dating yourself. So you didn't yeah. have an iPad in the back of the car? No, sir. Right? Okay. <laughs> well, we have... Lastly, for dessert, okay. there's a great image of the same kind of recipe. We're looking at South Central Alaska mm -hmm. the first week of January. In Jan first week of January, the sun, even at noon, is really, really low, low on the horizon, right. barely up. And in this image, the fun thing is the shadow of Denali. We can see the shadow oh, of wow. Denali over a, a lower pink cloud deck. Yeah, that's and amazing. Denali at 20,000 feet casts a big shadow. Mm -hmm. So this is another, just for fun, kind of application here. That's oh yeah, th this is called multispectral satellite imagery, and it's the future, and happily, <laughs> the future is now. Oh, that is fascinating, and 22 different secrets that can be revealed from just one satellite tool that's mm -hmm. floating overhead. Mm -hmm. Eric, thanks so much for joining us again. We, we can't wait to have you back and telling us more secrets of satellite technology <laughs> that are passing over us every single day and uh, many times a day mm -hmm. over Alaska and helping us all the way in uh, many different parts of our lives. So thanks so much for joining us again. Well, happy to be here. All right. And thank you for staying with us. We'll be back with a little more weather here in just a few minutes. And, of course, we'll have more Alaska weather facts anytime online. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back for a look at your marine forecast. Starting with the sea ice edge, we're seeing a push of multi-year ice moving into the eastern Beaufort. So you can see on the map kind of under the header there, that high 80, greater than 80% concentration ice starting to move into the eastern Beaufort from the Canadian waters. The other significant thing that we're seeing is the lack of high concentration ice very far north in the western Beaufort Sea. So we have low concentration ice down to one to three tenths uh, thickness up to about 80 degrees north in the western Beaufort. Uh, so some changes coming to the ice edge and we are only a couple of weeks likely away from our minimum ice cover. Taking a look at our winds and seas for southeast on Thursday, generally westerly to southwesterly flow over the Gulf, pretty light 10 to 15 knots with five to eight foot seas. Southerly winds over those inside waterways, 10 to 20 knots. On Friday, winds pretty consistent, still 10 to 15 knots across the board, but some directional changes. We've got a little bit more southwesterly flow for the central inside waterways and some northerly flow for the southern gulf. Thursday for south central, again, pretty light winds in the area, 10 to 15 knots, generally southerly and westerly flow, although we do have some southeasterly flow in Prince William Sound at about 10 knots. Heading into Friday, a little bit more consistent southwesterly flow around 10 knots, but we will have some northwesterly flow around 15 knots near the Barrens for Friday. Thursday for the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island areas, northwest to westerly flow, 15 to 20 knots. Pretty small seas though, five feet for the Gulf and three to four feet for the Bering Sea side of the peninsula. 
For Friday, just 10 to 15 knots of wind, but does shift to out of the east and northeast. Seas coming down even a little bit more, three to four feet for the Gulf side and just two to three feet for the Bering Sea side. Thursday for the Aleutian chain, we'll see relatively light winds for the eastern Aleutians out of the south and west for at about 15 knots. Stronger winds for the western Aleutians, though, out of the south and southwest, about 30 to 35 knots. And seas anywhere from 4 to 5 feet for the eastern Aleutians and 9 to 11 feet with those stronger winds over the western Aleutians. Heading into Friday, winds coming up for most of the Aleutians, 20 to 25 knots out of the east and southeast, and still 30 to 35 knots for the western Aleutians. We'll have low pressure centered right over the western Aleutians, so that's what's happening when you see the northerly wind there between Kiska and Shemya on Friday. Thursday for the west coast, 10 to 15 knot winds with directions a little bit all over the place. Closer to the west coast, we'll see northwesterly winds. But as we get out into the Bering Sea, some southwesterly winds near the Pribilofs and southeasterly winds near St. Matthew Island. For Friday for the west coast, winds coming up in the Bering a little bit to about 20 knots out of the east but otherwise 10 to 15 knots out of the west for Norton Sound and out of the east for the area off southwest. For the Arctic coast on Thursday, 20 knots generally out of the east and north and heading into Friday, 10 to 20 knots, still 20 knots along the north slope out of the due east, some northeasterly influence in the Chukchi Sea, 10 to 15 knots and about 15 knots out of the west in the Bering Strait. Recapping our weather for tonight, we have a weak low pressure system coming into the panhandle, also low pressure over south central and northwestern portions of the state. That northwesterly flow around the west side of that low pressure over the northwest coast of the state is going to be bringing higher water levels to northwest facing coastlines of the Seward Peninsula as well as the Yukon Delta. So between Shishmaref and Wales along the Seward Peninsula and the Yukon Delta, look for some higher water as well as waves along the coastline. Thanks so much for watching Alaska TV Weather. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.